the next speaker is uh, Jeremy Faith. And um, Jeremy has been uh, switching gears in a way of understanding the complexity that is imposed of us by uh, a common you know, neighbor that we have actually inside of us. All right, thank you all. I hope you're having a good Friday. And um, I'm speaker number 21 for those that are counting. The, I just want to first thank uh, Dr. Mira Marad, who has been co-collaborating on this one, and uh, Josh Borgadine and Graham Britton, who did the work that I'm going to present today. So a lot of the talks today have been about super fancy tools that can measure more and more stuff at the same time for cheaper, right? And I think one thing that we, we haven't talked enough about is the environment. Really, the environment is driving a lot of cancer. And more than fancy tools, I think stopping smoking cigarettes is one of the best ways to prevent cancer, right? So I think one of the more interesting uh, environmental perturbations to me is the gut microbiome or any microbiome because although you can stop smoking, you can't get rid of your microbiome no matter how hard you try. Like microbes like to stick to us. Um, and the microbiome sticks around with you for your whole life and because of that, it has the potential to influence how you respond to different therapeutics and the state of your immune system. And so a lot of what we do in the lab is to take the microbiomes of different people. Different people in this room all have different sets of microbes, and the set of microbes you have might determine the type of immune state you're in. And so what we do is we take germ-free mice. There's a large germ-free mouse facility at Mount Sinai. If you're interested in using it, come talk to me. Um, and we colonize these mice with different people's stool. And this is an example of the, the largest study ever done like this in the world by Graham Britton, a postdoc at Mount Sinai. And uh, this is too complicated of a plot to show you guys in five minutes, but the main idea is that all of these are different T cell subsets, and each column, so that the y axis is how much of the subset there is in the colon or the ileum of the mouse, and the different uh, X columns are microbiomes from different people put into different mice. And for all of the T cell subsets we've ever looked at, what you can notice is that some people's microbiomes push the subset high and some, some leave it low. And this is not just variation that you find if you do the experiment multiple times. What we find is that the same person tends to be high and, the, and the, another person will be low. And what we've shown and Mira Murad has shown and other people around the world have shown is that the state, this baseline immune state that you're sitting in determines your risk for many different diseases, at least in animal models. So it might make you resistant to an infection, but it might make you more likely to have colitis, for example. So given this type of observation, uh, MSTP student uh, Josh Borgardine decided to try to do this in the context of checkpoint blockade. There were some indications from some high-impact papers that the microbiome might influence the response to checkpoint blockade, which, as you know, is one of these blockbuster cancer drugs. And so the first thing that he checked out was, do you need microbes for checkpoint blockade to, to function? We know that the lack of microbes is, is associated with a very reduced immune system. So he took SBF mice, which are shown in blue, and he took um, antibiotic-treated mice, which are shown in red. And he put a xenograft tumor on them, a B16 melanoma, which is a very common cancer model. And then he either treats them, which is shown with the, um, the dotted lines, or he gives them an isotype control. And you can see that whether the mice get antibiotics or not, the, the tumor is shrinking. It doesn't grow as fast when they get the anti pd one So the drug works when you have antibiotics. Then to really verify this with the no, no microbes at all, after a little bit of technical practice to, to where he could do this with large gloves on that you have to have in the germ-free facility, Josh also showed that when there's no microbes at all, the checkpoint still works. So these mice don't need to have microbes to, in order for checkpoint blockade to work. So that got him then trying out different people's microbiomes. Do, do you potentially, I think one of the key points that was made earlier by Stephen Birkov was that although checkpoint blockade is an amazing drug, there's 65 people that don't respond, right? And this sort of hints at one mechanism why this might happen. So if you look on the, the left side is a, a person's microbiome that we put into mice and the, the checkpoint blockade works. But when we put the individual on the right, again, this is a, this is a healthy person. This was actually a fecal transplant donor at Mount Sinai. Um, but their microbes, when we put it into this model, for some reason, the, the checkpoint molecules no longer work. So there's something about this microbiome that's either through metabolites or through its manipulation of the immune system is inhibiting the, this cancer uh, drug from working. So to put it all together here, we have the three microbiomes. We have no microbes, and we have the, the presence of one person's microbiome in both of these, the, the, the anti pd one molecule works. But there's this one person's microbiome that's shown in pink here that 
Something about that microbiome is inhibiting the, the checkpoint blockade from working. So really, our, our goal for the future is to understand the mechanism behind this. Is it a metabolite? What type of immune cells are involved? Um, to understand if we can do microbial therapeutics, can we make cocktails of microbes that would allow this, us to transform that microbiome to take people that are resistant and change their microbiome in a very um, safe way? And then finally, to understand for different immune drugs, is the same type of phenomenon happening? And that's it. Thank you. Thanks very much.